us pray. May the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord. Amen. Hi everyone! Oops! I think we are in the wrong background. Wait, let me change it. Oh, one last time. Finally. Hi everyone. It's me again, Ma'am Janine Guevara. And welcome to this another video lesson in your English for Academic and Professional Purposes or EAPP class. But before we start our lesson, let's have some few reminders. Despite of our school's modality, which is modular, I am conducting this video lesson for you as your other material in your learning process. And you can watch this video in your available time and in your own convenience. So now, please ready your pen and paper and have your self-learning module with you. If you've chosen Modular Digital, all of your output from this video lesson will be submitted in our Google Drive and the link were sent in our GC and FB group. And if your modality is printed, you may submit all of your output during our Answership Retrieval that will be submitted by your parents. Are we all clear now? Alright! Once again, welcome to your EAPP channel! So before we move to our new lesson, let us have a quick review time from your previous self-learning module. Remember, whenever you see these pen and paper icons, it means that you are going to answer something. So make sure that you won't miss it, okay? Okay, let us now have our review time. Write or draw the hashtag icon if the data is quantitative and heart if the data is qualitative. Remember, hashtag for quanti, heart for quality. Number one, guitar makers in San Anton are experiencing the same struggle. Number two, 50% of the ABM students chose online classes as their learning delivery modality. Number three, obesity can be prevented through knowing and monitoring the proper body mass index or BMI. Number four, Social media influences how people make their decisions nowadays. And number five, vaccines are safe and needed for protection of everybody against COVID-19. Let us see if you got the correct answer. For the item number one, the correct answer is heart. Yes, it is a qualitative data. For the item number two, the correct answer is hashtag or for quantitative. For the item number three, the data is quantitative also. So the answer is hashtag. And for the answer number four, the data is qualitative. So the answer is heart. And for the last item, the answer is heart. Yes, that's correct because the data is qualitative. How many correct answers did you get? I hope that you remembered our past lesson. What have you noticed in the given data from our review? It smells like... Right, it smells like research. Qualitative and quantitative, PR1 and PR2. So you are very familiar with this because... You've already taken this and currently, you are taking your III subject. Aside from your research, all the given data can also be found in your other subject areas, right? Like hope, trends, MIL, social sciences, and other subjects that I wasn't able to mention. And we are now done in our review. For this session, you will be learning about designing, testing, and revising survey questionnaires. For you to have something to look forward to, I will be presenting the objectives of this lesson. The objectives of this lesson are Identify various types of survey questions Construct a sample survey questionnaire 
and familiarize with the do's and don'ts in writing a survey questionnaire. Pen and paper icon, it means you are going to answer something. And let's have an activity called Rank Me. We have here five of the most popular social media apps, which are Messenger, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And you are going to rank them according to three indicators, which are school needs, entertainment needs, and personal communication needs. Remember, rank them, number one, as the highest rank. Let's go! First, rank them according to the school needs. Rank away! Second, according to entertainment needs. And the last one, according to personal communication needs. Now, which app got the highest rank for all the indicators? Can you get the average? I know you've learned this from your stats class during your grade 11. What do you think the activity is all about? I know that you are very familiar with this one. Can you associate these words? Four picks and one word and guess what is the activity is called? Correct! Survey! Let us now have the discussion time for the different types of survey question. These are the following popular types of survey questions. Number one, multiple choice questions. These are the most popular survey question type. They allow your respondents to select one or more options from a list of answers that you define. Seeing in your screen is the example of a multiple choice question. Second type is the rating scales. These rating scales display a scale of answer options from any range 0 to 100, 1 to 10, or etc. Showing in your screen is the example of rating scales. Next type is the Likert scales. Likert scales are the do you agree or disagree questions you often see in surveys and are used to gauge respondents' opinions and feelings. Showing you in your screen is the example of Likert scales. Next type is matrix questions. Matrix questions is a series of Likert scale questions or a series of rating scales questions. Showing you in the screen is the example of matrix questions. Next type of survey is the open-ended questions. These open-ended questions require respondents to type in their answer into a comment box and don't provide specific preset answer options. An example of open-ended questions will be shown in your screen. Next type of survey question is demographic questions. Demographic questions used in gathering information about a respondent's background or income level. An example of demographic question will be shown in your screen. And the last type is ranking questions. Ranking questions asks respondents to order answer choices by way of preference. Example of this is shown in your screen. And this is what we did a while ago. Now that we've already discussed the popular types of survey questions, let us now move to the do's and don'ts in writing survey questions. These do's and don'ts will help you to assess the survey questions that you've written or you are currently writing for your research. Here are the following do's and don'ts in writing the survey questions. Let us start with the do's. Number one, use your target language. This will help creating empathy along with your audience positively influencing response rate. Number two do's. Keep it simple. Always use a straightforward and clear vocabulary. For the third do's, insert screening questions when needed. Screening questions direct the survey to a selected target filtering the respondents. For example, if the survey is for pet owners, 
A typical screening question is, do you own a cat or a dog? The survey will continue depending on the answer. For the number four do's, a design for each survey, an internet or paper survey requires more attention on physical visual details compared to a telephone survey, as it is directly aimed to the respondent. For the number five do's, check, check again, and check a third time. Committing mistake in your first draft is normal, so always check and double check your work. And last but not the least, the final do's is to insert an open-ended questions. They are useful to gather more details on topics for your area of interest. Let's now move to the don'ts in writing survey questions. First don't is have unclear goals. The goal is the base of the questionnaire, not the other way around. If the goal is not clear, examine your project more in detail and just after a good analysis, start designing the questionnaire. Number two, underestimate screening questions. For example, you have a questionnaire on children's favorite TV shows. In this case, Screening questions will be useful to understand if the respondent has children or nephews or niece, if they live together, and if they are in the right age range. Just after the screening phase, the actual interview can start. Third in the don'ts, overlook possible answers. Put yourself in your respondent's shoes and imagine how his or her answers can be useful for your goal. Then, include useful questions in the survey. For the number four, revise tests superficially. Survey revision is essential not to lose reliability. Missing words and spelling mistakes make you unprofessional. Number five, not to guarantee correct personal data use. The respondent has to feel safe to transmit his personal data. So promise and keep legal use of personal data. And if you don't need personal data for your survey, just guarantee anonymity. And last one for the don'ts in writing a survey question. Use too many acronyms and technical terms. Identify your audience to see what specific language to use for them to understand easily. That's our discussion for the different types of survey questions and the do's and don'ts in writing the survey questionnaires. Let us now move to the generalization. Writing a survey questions or the survey questions are not just important for the research subjects. It is also important for the different subject areas and the different fields. These survey questions are important not just inside the school but also outside our school in the laboratories, and also in our daily living. This can be used in building a house, choosing of colors, pricing of different products that we use, and many more. Pen and paper out! It means that we have another activity. Let us now check your learning meter if you remember or if you learned from my discussion a while ago. I will be showing you actual survey questionnaires from your different subject areas like English, Science and Filipino or Pagbasa at Pagsusuri tungo sa pananaliksik. And you are going to identify what type of survey questionnaires are they. Are you ready? Let's have it! First survey. Second survey. Third survey. Fourth survey. And lastly, the fifth survey. Let's check if you got the correct answer. The first is demographic question. 
Second, open-ended questions. Third is Likert scales. Fourth, rating scales. And the last one, yes, it's a multiple choice questions. Can you count how many correct answers you got? And let's see what your score is telling you. I have here a success scale that tells you what your score wants to tell you. If you got five correct answers, it means that you're gonna be a CEO. Wow, I'm looking forward for that. And if you got four correct answers, it means that you're gonna be a supervisor or a manager someday. Next level, huh? And if you got three correct answers, it means that you're gonna be hired as a regular employer. So not bad for average correct answers. If you got two correct answers, you will be called for a job interview. And if you got one correct answer, it means that you can write your resume and then later on you're going to get your job interview. And if you got zero or you did not get any correct answer, it means aral muna, bawal muna ang ML at joa. And now that you've seen your learning meters, it is now time to work with your peers. For this activity, you will choose your body or peer that you are going to work with. Look for a research that is related to your strand, then assess and identify the kind of questionnaire that the researchers used. Take note, if it's unfamiliar format, you may search about them with your peer. After that, you are going to construct your own survey questionnaire. You may choose from the different types of survey questionnaire, and these questions will be based from the study that you've researched for the submission, if you use Google Docs or Google Form, you may give or send to me the link of your output. And if you use the MS Word or WPS, you may upload them in our Google Drive link that is sent in our GC. And for those who will use answer sheets or papers, you may submit them on our retrieval. I hope the instructions were crystal clear. We are now at the end part of our video lesson. And for this part, I will be asking about your reflection. What is the most important thing that you've learned from this session? And how are you going to use your learning in your current subjects and your future subjects or career outside your senior high school? You may write your reflections in your answer sheets or in the different digital tools. And I encourage you to post a status or your my day about your reflections in your learnings in these sessions with the hashtag learning in LNHS is fun and hashtag be best LNHS. To end this video lesson, I will be providing an assessment to evaluate your learning from this session. A Google form link will be sent in our group chat and the link will be open for the entire week. And if you need a consideration like for those who are working, I can reopen the link and just send me a personal message. And for those who do not have the access in the internet, you may answer the assessment that is in your SLM. Just write them in your answer sheet and submit them during our retrieval. Wow! That was a fun session! I hope that you've learned and you've enjoyed this video as much as I did. And there you have it! Thank you very much and see you again in our next video lesson. Always remember that in everything we do, may we always glorify our Lord Jesus Christ. Stay safe. God bless. Adios. Bye.